What's up everybody? This is Fatboy Chronicles and this shit is finna be delicious. What's finna be delicious? This. What is it? Today we're making Vietnamese caramel coconut chicken. All right, guys, so what I have here are some uh, chicken thighs, about five chicken thighs, and I'm seasoning them with uh, my own little house blender seasoning. So it's basic seasonings, but with the addition of curry powder. All right, so we're going to let these sit. If you have a baker's rack, uh, what is it, with a cooling rack, whatever these things are, get one of these, right? You need them for your kitchen. Um, and it's basically so that this chicken thighs can dry out. You don't want any moisture in them because we're going to brown them, and then we're going to make our coconut caramel sauce. All right, so while the chicken is drying out, let's go over our ingredients really, really quick for this chicken. Now, remember, this is chicken. Chicken is a blank canvas. You can do so much with it, right? So let's 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 move past just fried chicken and baked chicken. You know, those are good, but let's let's introduce some new flavors to it. So we're gonna make this coconut caramel chicken. So what we need is all right. We have loosely about a cup of brown sugar. We have some coconut milk. Make sure when you get that coconut milk, you shake it up really, really well so that that cream. Um, doesn't just sit at the top. It's all mixed together. All right. So because you have those two sweet items, we have to add sour and umami, right? So we have some fish sauce and we have some lime to cover both of those parts of your uh, palate. And then of course we have green onions that we're going to use to top it. And I'm adding onions to mine. So to steal a line from tap the brown, that's my business. I like onions. So I'm adding onions to mine. All right. That's all we need for this. All right. My skillet is hot. I'm going to put this down, uh, these chicken thighs in there down skin side first. You don't want to crowd your pan. So if you have to do it in shifts, do it in shifts. The main thing is we want to get a good brown on here. And the only way to get a good brown is put it in there and leave it alone, y'all. Stop flipping it back and forth. Just put the chicken in there skin side down. Wait five to seven minutes before you even touch it. All right, let's just put it in there and leave it alone. All right, y'all can probably hear that chicken in the back popping and sizzling in that skillet because I left it alone. All right, so what I'm going to do is make a quick pickling for a um, a carrot, cucumber, hot pepper uh, topping. All right, so it's super, super simple. All we're going to do is chop these up really, really small uh, and then pickle them for about 15 to 20 minutes, and that's going to be our topping. All right, and in the meantime, while things are cooling, I'm going to start my uh, cucumber um, carrot pickle. All right, so basically what I did, I skinned uh, one cucumber, and then, of course, I took out the seeds because nobody wants to eat that, right? And so we're going to chop those up uh, very thin, thin and to basically sticks to mirror this. I could have done this with carrots, but, you know, I decided to go the cheap way and just buy them already uh, diced. So we're going to do the same thing and mirror the same shape with these cucumbers. All right, so my chicken got a little darker than I wanted it to, but that's all good. Um... So, hey, you let it brown. So I said seven minutes. This took about five minutes to get this level of brown. We're not cooking this chicken all the way through. We just wanted to brown it to sear in the flavor because it's going to slow cook in that uh, coconut caramel sauce. All right, so now we've diced our cucumbers and our carrots matchstick to match. And then we have our hot peppers. Now, again, with the hot peppers, you have to gauge how hot you want yours because this is going to, it's not going to ferment like for long, but that, that, that hot pepper flavor will intensify. If you still like the flavor of a pepper, but not all the heat, then take out some of the seeds and some of the membrane so that it's not too spicy. Okay, so we've matched those, uh, diced those all up, and then we have our pickling. Now, I added a little bit of um, lime zest because the Holy Ghost told me to do it, so I did it. All right, so there's honey, and if you notice the difference of colors because I have two different types of honey, right? You got a fall honey and a spring honey. And if you ever want to know the difference, come to my class. I'll tell you all about it. You have uh, just regular pickling, all right? So whatever you use to pickle your vegetables, use that. We're going to mix that up. I add a little lime in mine. Plus, we have our vegetables. We're going to do that. Add these together and let it sit for about 15 minutes. All right, so I mix, I mix mine all up. I'm going to pour it over um, these vegetables. This is a quick pickle, all right? Make sure, now you see my sugar is, is I'm going to scrape all that in there. Um, and we're going to let it sit in the refrigerator just, like I said, for about 15 to 20 minutes. If you've ever had Escovich, um, whatever you had, if you had Escovich snap or anything like that, it's going to kind of remind you of that in flavor. Um, and it's going to be a great topping to go with that sweet coconut curry. Um, this is going to be a brightness that you're going to enjoy. All right, so now we're getting ready to make the caramel. Okay, so one thing, don't let caramel scare you, homemade caramel. You definitely want to make your own caramel instead of trying to get that jarred stuff, that canned stuff. One, it's way too sweet. It's a lot of high fructose corn syrup, all that crap, just a lot of stuff to give it shelf life when making caramel is like probably one of the simplest things you can do. If you can make gravy, you can make caramel. All caramel is is sugar gravy. 
So we're gonna make a real, real quick caramel. We're gonna add our coconut milk to it. Um, just add a little bit of sourness to kind of offset that sweetness. And then bam, we're gonna have our coconut caramel sauce. All right, so I added my brown sugar to the skillet. Um, we're gonna slow cook this. Um, so you set the fire to a medium, to medium high, just to kind of get it activated. And then you have to keep mixing. You cannot walk away from this because the difference between good caramel and order and takeout it could be a minute, all right? So you, you, you can't walk away from this. And you want your caramel to be a good dark color. And we'll kind of talk about the difference in color in a moment. But get it started. All right, the caramel has started. And this is what separates the cooks from the people who just think they know what they're doing in the kitchen, okay? So you have to get your cooking utensils ready. This is obviously a cast iron skillet. You can't use certain metals. You do not want to use anything plastic in here when it comes to caramel because you're going to kill yourself and, you know, don't sue me though. All right. Uh, so don't use anything plastic in here. You also want to be careful with metal on this cast iron, but a good wooden spoon and you're going to keep mixing this. You're going to keep mixing it till it reminds you of Wesley Snipes. All right. So my caramel has been going for about, eh, about seven minutes or so, seven minutes. Um, so, <laughs> hey, y'all remember that line? And what, don't be a menace where he was like, I hate the back of Forrest Whitaker's neck because it's black, right? So we're about Forrest Whitaker's stage. We need to get to Wesley Snipes stage. We're not quite there yet. So we're going to keep letting it cook, letting the sugar uh, cook down. If you need to add a little bit more water as you do it, keep doing that. We are approaching Wesley Snipes phase. Um, <clears throat> the sugar, that graininess of the sugar is cooking out. We're getting more of a liquid... Um, caramel sauce which is what we want all right and it's going to be just about time to add our coconut cream so i'm going to give it about another minute and then we're going to add the coconut cream all right guys so now i'm adding one can of coconut cream or cream of coconut in there whatever it's called coconut milk that's what i would add it. one can of coconut milk in there and then we're going to immediately mix this we're going to add our onions and then we're going to season to taste before uh adding our chicken back all right, so with the addition of the coconut milk, we had like a Tony Braxton thing going on, I guess. So we added the onions to that. I uh, put about a half of the, ju the juice of half of a lime, and now we're gonna add our fish sauce. So what we had there, because that coconut uh, milk is, is, is kind of sweet, caramel was definitely sweet. We had to offset some of that sweetness. So we added some savory with the onions, we added some brightness with the lemon, and now we're gonna add the umami with the fish sauce. All right, at this phase, this Tony Braxton phase, we're going to add our chicken back in, and then this is when we're going to play the waiting game. So we want it to get back to Wesley Snipes, okay? So we're just going to slow cook it. So you're going to put the chicken back in, and then we're going to cut this fire on low and let these, uh, this gravy caramelize, re-caramelize, and then just baste the chicken in the gravy. Hey, so you can see the chicken is coming along. Hey, I added a little bit of red pepper because I had some left over. It's not something that you need. I just had some left over um, from a project I did. So I just went ahead and just threw some in there because, hey, red pepper makes everything better. Um, so I got onions, red peppers. I also added a little fresh ginger because I had some. So I tasted it. Y'all, hey, hey, I had to do my fat boy happy dance, right? So I'm, I'm literally waiting in great anticipation of what's about to happen, right, with this chicken. So, so the chicken absorbing all of that good caramel flavor um, is, is, is tenderizing it. Hey, this is about to be good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, check out this caramel, right? So think of where we came from, right? So we had a Wesley Snipes going on. We went from a Wesley Snipes to a Tony Braxton. So now we're at like a, I guess like an Alfre Woodard or like a Viola Davis going on, which is what you want. You want a beautiful Viola Davis going on with this caramel sauce. Um, so it's, it's rich and it's thickened in flavor and intensity. Uh, we added a few more aromatics to it to just really give it more depth of flavor. We're ready to plate in the next five to ten minutes. All right, guys, so what I'm presenting to you now is just some accoutrement or just something to add if you want just to take your food from level one to level two. Um, so just I just took some peanuts that I had in the house, just chopped them up. We'll add that. That's great for texture, a little crunch, a uh, little earthiness. Then you have some hot peppers if you like it spicy. As you can see, uh, just a few of the seeds in there, no membrane. Um, so this is going to be mildly spicy, but this is a red jalapeno. Uh, scallions, of course, make everything better. Green onion, spring onion, whatever you want to call them. And then here is some basil, which I, I chiffonade, and I'm going to add that to my cucumber and carrot salad. This is going to add a great 
uh, earthiness, a great herbaceous flavor. If you don't have basil, I just happen to have some. Another great uh, accompaniment with this would be some um, cilantro. All right, guys, so we plated our food. So I have two chicken thighs on here. I put my cucumber carrot salad, uh, some scallions, and of course, I had to put the peanuts on there for crunch. So I'm getting ready to taste this. I plated my food up. I'm so excited. I'm ready. Y'all ready? All right, let's taste it. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of this chicken. Make sure I get a little bit of this rice down in here. And I gotta get every, all the bites all together. Boom. Mm. Already that's what. All right, so on here, I got chicken, I got my salad, I got my rice. You know something good when you gotta do the fat boy dance. Hey, this is rocking. It's amazing. It's sweet, it's savory, it's crunchy, it's sour. It's everything all at the same time, right? So hey, do it. Do it at home. Try it on your own. Let me know how it turns out. You may not make yours like mine. But like I told y'all on the shirt, hey, what I say? This shit finna be delicious. Check me out next time. Hey y'all. Hey, this chicken is fine. Ain't no other words to say it but other than fact, I tried to eat it with my fork and knife, and you know what I'm saying, because you know I'm making this video, or whatever. This chicken got so good. This sauce is so sticky and so sweet and so wonderful. I had hey, I just had to pick up the chicken thigh and just hey. Hey, it's fine. It's good. Make this. I promise you, you won't regret it. It's fine. Fat boy chronicles.